I am deeply gratified by the United States Senate's confirmation today of Ambassador Kenneth Edelman to be director of the Arms Control and Disarmament Agency. It's my earnest hope that this positive step will mark the beginning of a new bipartisan consensus on the vital issue of nuclear arms reduction. I'm convinced that Kenneth Edelman will prove that the confidence which the Senate has expressed in him today is well-founded. Under his leadership, we can look forward to a reinvigorated arms control and disarmament agency that will make an important contribution to our arms reduction efforts. As we seek equitable and verifiable agreements with the Soviet Union to reduce the arsenals and the risks of war, we will need the advice and support of the Congress. I'm confident that with full consultation with Congress and the development of our arms reduction initiatives, the United States can continue to be a force for genuine peace and progress in the world. And if we're met with reciprocal seriousness of purpose from the Soviet Union, 1983 can be a year of historic importance in securing a more solid and stable peace through arms reductions. Uh, Helen? President, are we directly or indirectly supplying, arming, or training any insurgents, uh, Nicaraguan insurgents? And if so, why? We are complying with the law, the Boland Amendment, which is the law. We're complying with that fully. And um, in... Does that mean we are not arming or supplying any of the um, dissidents along the border, the Honduran border? I am not going to get it. I could not and would not possibly talk about such things, but may I point out that this whole controversy over Nicaragua is ignoring some realities. That the Nicaraguan government is a revolutionary government that uh, took power by force, but with the promise of democratic elections, none of which have taken place. And all of this was under the previous administration. The previous administration, however, uh, did recognize this government uh, of Nicaragua, sought to help it with considerable financial aid, and withdrew that aid long before we were here, when it became apparent that the government had become completely Marxist, had turned away and thrown out some of the uh, democratic groups that had supported them and fought with them in the revolution to bring democracy to Nicaragua, and were then no longer a part of the government. But also, the cutoff of funds was because the Nicaraguan government had pledged to the United States that it would not attempt to th overthrow any other governments in Central America, uh, particularly El Salvador, uh, by helping the insurgents there, the guerrillas, and they violated that promise. And they are still violating it. And anything that we're doing in that area is simply trying to interdict the supply lines which are supplying the guerrillas in El Salvador. But the picture today is that Nicaragua, with its protests that somehow someone is trying to overthrow them, it as a revolutionary government is trying to overthrow the government of a neighboring country, El Salvador, which was a duly elected government and which is going to hold another election uh, before this year is out. No. But Mr. Uh, President, what is the American public to think if uh, Congressman Bolin, who as you know is chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, says there's very strong evidence that, uh, that we are violating uh, the law? How do we clear this with the, uh, with the American people? Don't they have a reason if a congressman is saying that we're violating the law? Uh, well, maybe that something, some of you people something misled wrong? him. <laughs> no, but he has, no. A, he has access to intelligence information, uh, to administration yes, briefings. Yes, and uh, uh, I think Secretary Schultz and... Uh, our security advisor, Judge Clark, uh, have both been talking to him, and uh, you have seen the statement by uh, Barry Goldwater of the Intelligence Committee that uh, is absolutely positive that there is no, uh, no violation of the law whatsoever. I, th I think that uh, when they pay a little more attention to this, they're going to find out we're not violating the law. Let me do what I promised the other day and start with some of the people in the back of the room here. Mr. President, are you willing to say flatly that the United States is not engaging in any activities that a reasonable person could assume would be for the purpose of overthrowing the Nicaraguan government? 
We are not doing anything to try and overthrow the Nicaraguan government. As a matter of fact, let's put that in perspective for a moment. Nicaragua today has created the biggest military force in all of Central America and large parts of South America. An army of some 25,000 backed by a militia of 50,000, armed with Soviet weapons that consist of heavy-duty tanks, uh, an air force, uh, helicopter gunships, fighter planes, bombers, and so forth, heavy artillery, and a few thousand mosquito Indians and guerrillas. I don't think it's reasonable to assume that that kind of a force could nurse any ambitions uh, that they can overthrow that government with that great military force. And um, I think that people should understand uh, some of these things and ask themselves what is the need for uh, them having the biggest army uh, in all of the region. There are, we are cooperating with the other Central American countries in the region to try and bring democracy and peace uh, to Central America. Now, yes, Mr. President, uh, this morning your Assistant Secretary of State for Inter-American Affairs, Mr. Enders, told the House uh, Foreign Affairs Committee that there was a possibility Cuba or the Soviet Union may introduce high-performance aircraft or even Cuban troops into Nicaragua. Do you have any information about any impending possibility of this? And if so, what would be the American response to that move? Well, no, I think I'm not going to answer, ask, answer a high, hypothetical question with a hypothetical answer. Um, and uh, I only know that that possibility uh, does exist because the Soviet Union, uh, by way of Cuba, uh, has been engaged already. Uh, may I remind you that at the inauguration of the revolutionary government when it took over, uh, Castro was present and a representative of the Soviet Union and both of them openly hailed Nicaragua as the first communist country on the mainland of a Western of the Western Hemisphere. Mr. President, I ask a question on a domestic did, issue. Did, did uh, we want to get you next. Right. Uh, Mr. President, uh, considering what you, what you've just said about Nicaragua and your past statements about how it is a staging area there, doesn't the United States want that government replaced? And is there anything that you you feel that we should be doing within the law to to uh, have that government in Nicaragua replaced with a democratic one? We. Of course, as I said, uh, anything that we're doing is aimed at interdicting these supply lines and stopping this uh, effort to overthrow the El Salvador government. But um, uh, what I might personally wish, or what our government might wish, uh, still would not justify us violating the law of the land. And you're not doing anything to overthrow the government? Uh, no, there. because that would be violating the law. Mr. President. You were success successful in your efforts to get a job for Ron Bricker, the uh, bold young man from Pittsburgh who gave you his resume. I understand a lot of other unemployed steel workers are now flooding the White House with requests for help. Are, are you planning to help get jobs for these other people too? I haven't, I haven't seen any uh, uh, of those uh, resumes, if they've been sent or anything. I didn't know that. I know there's been talk about up there. Um, if you remember that day, Mr. Bricker accosted me and handed me his resume and asked me would I show it uh, to anyone if I had the opportunity that he was seeking work. And I said, yes, I would. I did. He's got a job. Now, um, uh, I didn't expect that all of the unemployed were suddenly going to ask me to be the employment agency individually for them. I think that'd be impossible. But at any time that I can be in any way of help and uh, lining someone up with an employer who's looking for an employee, of course I'd do it because I think it's a problem on all our minds and I think uh, this digresses from your question. But I think we ought to recognize that throughout this country, uh, radio and TV stations that have held uh, jobathons have been successful in getting thousands of people put back to work. There are local groups and committees, including right there in Pittsburgh, that are doing the same thing in an effort to help stimulate and move faster, and uh, they have to do it on a basis of individuals. Uh, uh, and we, of course, in our own legislation with the so-called jobs bill, have, are doing our part here at the government level. But the main way they're going to go back to work is going to be 
with the recovery of the economy. Thank now, Bill. Mr. President, oh, I just recognized Bill. Can I, this Thank you so much. <laughs> Let me ask you this, sir. Do the War Powers Act and the Boland Amendment unduly restrict your authority as the chief executive, and would you like to see something done about it? Helen, I should have listened to you. <laughs> I think any legislation which uh, restricts uh, the relation or is, confines itself to the, the relationship of a, of a single country, our relationship with a single country, yes, is um, restrictive uh, on the obligations that the Constitution imposes on the President. Uh, all right. Mr. President.